Wow, it's Woolsey. Welcome back to another Geometry Dash Woolsey Wednesday episode. Dora Bay is an insanely iconic creator with levels over 44 million downloads that exist in the Dora Bay Basic series. Now, these were made in 1.9. Today, I want to reimagine this and make Woolsey Wednesday Basic in the big 2.2. We're using a boss fight song called Flirt, Flirt, Oh, It Hurts. It's a banger from back in the day. You know we had to use it. I was going to get straight into this, to be honest. We're going to place just single spikes here. Set the background to black. I'm kind of feeling a purple, so let's just get these set up on color channel number one which we can set up straight away like so bang bang let's also just use the regular blocks here making sure they're set to color channel one and one this should be a super easy video to make when i play this in normal mode there's a slight awkward glow around these objects let me just show you the difference between these objects having no glow you see that the top ones are just ever so slightly cleaner especially on the blocks look at the blocks that's crazy I'm just gonna make sure we apply that for the entire level because that way this whole thing is gonna be cleaner and i can really go hard with the basic vibe I'm gonna put down a spider orb here and put some fake blocks with some regular objects right here that have no outline. See on the hitboxes, there's nothing there. You put some blocks over here and then put spikes on the very left just to make the structure make sense. Let's just put one of these spikes over on the right hand side. We could just put a spider orb right here. That's neat. We're really just gonna keep this part the same all the way through until the drop here. Hopefully I can get the sink right here. Okay, nice. I feel like this is going to be a little bit random where we get spat out because of this portal and jump combination just leading us down a bad path. So I like to scale my orbs when that happens to make the ending consistent right here. I feel like doing an open ship transition where the speed changes early and then something on the screen kind of flashes on when it goes boom. Then to make matters interesting at the very beginning, let's set up a shader trigger that we can put down at the very beginning. Let's see. We can do a very slow pinch fading transition for like two seconds. I'm going to have to preview shaders for this. This one and then use the X and Y. Doesn't seem to do much, but let me see. Oh, the radius. Yeah, I always forget about this. Um, okay, we'll start off with like a 0.4 on the X and Y here, and then turn up the radius to like 0.5. In normal mode, this is gonna curve the screen and send us to the back, which is gonna be pretty trippy once we hide the ground here. It's a little bit weird. I think it'll be fine. You see that some objects are transitioning on and off the screen. We gotta fix that too, just by using don't fade and don't enter. But this looks good so far. Let's just select everything and then check those two boxes. If we make the line black, then we're just gonna be floating off in the distance straight away. And the ground's not really gonna exist, which leaves a lot of room for our own creativity there instead. We can even use an options trigger just to hide the ground. That's the off button. I need the on button, dude. Now let's just do a test. If we place a saw blade under the ground, is it going to be there in normal mode? Yes, it is. And it's under the ground. And it kind of tore right there. Did you see that? I don't know how I'm going to combat that, but whatever. I'm hoping that under the ground... <sighs> that's a terrible straight line, bro. Come on. It's because I'm trying to build with the shader turned on. Turn that off. Dude, I did it again. Never mind. I'm just washed. This can be the first ground in the level. It's going to be group number one. It's going to be this color, but I think I'm going to make it black at first, which is slowly going to fade on to match the regular color in the level. We can just copy color channel number one, I believe. Yeah, like this. Honestly, we can just set the entire level to be color channel number two instead. So it all fades on here. And then just as a test, what happens if I change color channel number one to something like an orange? Will that change the whole thing? Yes, this is really neat. <laughs> we changed the color of this pinch trigger. That's pretty funny. I don't think I want that. I want that to be normal again. There we go. So using that group number one, we're going to place an area scale at the very beginning, which is going to be touch triggered. So nothing really breaks in the level. I want these squares to scale down to like 0.5. We'll give it the target is group number one. It's going to be centered on the player and these objects are going to stop scaling by the time I get there without a length Let's just say five blocks around me. So we're playing the levels black and then we fade on and these squares are scaling up with me, which is pretty cool. Honestly, I can increase the length like crazy and that's going to make it a little bit more subtle here. But watch this. I can copy this line, move it down and go to group number two and then just keep doing the same thing. Three at number four as well. Let's make five layers. Why not? If I just take this area scale and I can just make layers of it. So this is number one. Then let's just say for group number two, we can have editor layer number two. It's going to be useful because I can select group number one, group number two. The difference between these two, I'm going to decrease the length by 50 and then change the group to number two. Straight away, you'll see that the bottom line so far is kind of different on the grid. Let's just keep going. We can copy paste, move to editor layer number three and do the exact same thing. Make this 150, group number three. 
and now the grid is even more chunky. I've just done that for four and five, four is obviously 100, five is gonna be 50. So now we have a grid that goes all the way out. Why is it broken? I don't understand what's happening there. Is it not loading or something? I think the pinch might be breaking it. I think I should just find a different trigger. I thought that would be fun to use at the beginning, but I guess not. The game just had other plans. This ground looks cool too, I don't mind it. It's just not very Dora Bay. I mean, as soon as we leave the ground, this is boring anyway. I guess we can just use this for the intro. We could just start scaling them off like right here, I guess. Let's just link all of these together. Give them a group number six. And because we've left the ground, we can just start with a scale trigger up here, which is going to be set for group number six. No center because I want them to all be centered on themselves. And then I can just divide by 100 on the X and Y here, just like this. Pressing these two divide buttons. We can do an ease in and maybe like two seconds. And after this trigger ends, we can literally just toggle these off. So hopefully these squares are all going to disappear after we get a bit of height here. It's not great. It's not the most satisfying thing I've ever seen. If I just change this to one second instead. There we go. That's decent. It just doesn't toggle off as soon as I'd like it to. Yeah, there we go. So we've got to figure out something new for the block effect here. That's kind of a shame, honestly. I was feeling that. Wait, wait, wait. I figured out a solution. If I take this and I put it on B1 and select the entire rest of the level, making it B2 only, then we can set the pinch that I wanted with the fade time and everything. Pretty sure this is the same way I had it. Onto a shader that is only focused on B2. So then only the blocks move back. The ground will stay the same, which is kind of weird. Don't know how I feel about that. Also, the gameplay, it feels like, is not in the right place. I feel huge. Oh, because the player is not on this layer. Okay, gotcha. Looking at the shader trigger, the player is next to T1 and B1. So if I make these blocks something like T2, the rest of the level can be on a different layer. I just gotta choose which one. I don't know. It's gotta be near here. Just imagine an invisible P in between them. Let's choose T1 for this because now when I go into the shader I will just wrap the player in with this range So it's only these two and the rest are all gray So now the player goes back and the ground is in the front and it's not gonna glitch. Thank goodness now I have something to test. Oh Dude the player is behind the orbs. There's genuinely a solution to this, which is moving the orbs and portals to be one and then including that in the shader range like this. Now the pinch is working and the player is on top. This should look good. It just looks weird that the ground is now apart. Man. Oh, there were portal effects that weren't in the right place. Okay, let me just select the entire level and just turn off all effects uh, like this. How do I make the ground look normal, dude? Maybe if I put zero fade time on this pinch shader and use an area move trigger to try and move these objects all on group six up a little bit. You see how these objects are kind of moved up. That this square is higher than this square is higher than this square as we're getting closer to it. That's what we've done here on this X-based setting which is moving it as we're getting there. Maybe this will work just for a fake pinch? I don't know. It's so weird. We're gonna see how it looks in normal mode. It actually makes sense. This works. Dude, it works well enough. Come on now. now. Let's just test that the portal effects work. Yes, they do. They look kind of anticlimactic as we go through, but whatever, dude. It's fine. Might even turn off particles. Okay, let's do just that. Select all, no particle. Then I'm going to place three saw blades at the top of the level on color channel number two. I'm going to slow their rotation down to 10, and then I'm going to warp one all the way to the left like this, and one all the way to the right. Let's just space these apart like this. I think I can get three layers in if I just rotate this gradually more and more to the left like so that would be pretty good I can just copy paste those from the left onto the right with the opposite rotation to make sure they rotate the same way and boom We now have a saw blade with seven different angles on it I mean we could technically go further and warp even more But I'm gonna use a new trick that someone told me if I just select all of these and I go into the new group X button now, from left to right, they go seven, then they go eight, the last one should be 13, all in a row. We're gonna make a toggle loop for these. We should just be able to watch these turn off like that. Slap those at the very beginning of the level so they're off, and then for every beat in the song, we're gonna activate them like this in a line. Boom. But they're going to toggle off after the first toggle happens. So when eight is on, seven is off. Now a mistake I've been making in videos when I've been sequencing triggers is if I want to bunch them closer together, I've been rotating them. However, now you see how this is kind of skewed. Seven and eight are on before seven even turns off. It's bad. That's because of the way that I've placed the triggers. If I just go into these triggers, move them up so they're on the exact same spot, then they shouldn't get skewed in the rotation and they should be the same amount of effect lines. Yeah, you see? So now when I press play, 
These should just shoot all the way across like that. Let's get rid of 13 on the end for the toggle. So this one stays on. So it goes ch and it goes all the way to the right. We can also get rid of the toggle 7. So it goes from the left over to the right. Ch. Okay. With a bit of sync, this could be good. Right, left. Okay, we have to make a new set. Let's copy what we have. Flip it around. It's going to be slightly complicated, I think. We have to enable 12, but also toggle 13 on this block, which is going to be interesting. Okay, it's all just in the wrong order. I think I'd rather just remake this set. It should genuinely just be a lot easier. So now 13 has to be toggled first, then 12, then 11, then 9, after the 10. Yeah, you know what I mean. Bullsy Fumbles Commentary, episode 4006. Okay, so the next step down, these things have to... Oh gosh, I'm confused. 13 toggles, so 12 should toggle on. So if I select these, move them up into their place, but here, just on that different layer, these should be on. And now, if we just get rid of that seven toggle, goes all the way to the left. Did it! Shh, shh. Just ignore that that one's slower, okay? I haven't actually timed it yet. This one could be maybe a little bit slower overall. Nice! And I could try and loop these, but I'd just rather do it for the sync with the triggers themselves every time. Bang, bang. Bang. I'm gonna turn off effect lines because this is getting super ugly. Oh, that's actually ruining my sync. Hold on. <laughs> I was in flow state. I don't know what I'm gonna do for the sync here, but whatever. So we have these layers. Let me show you what it looks like when they're all piled onto the same block. Don't worry that they're all visible. That's just a bug from not pausing and unpausing. Now this saw blade is going to warp onto its side, which is a super cool effect. I actually really like it. That's cool looking. Straight away, this is the saw blade that tilts. That's really cool. We can put this in with arrows too. It's really the simplest thing to make. I'm trying to think, what would Dorobe do? I have no idea what Dorobe would do. I haven't seen a Dorobe level in actual years. It should just be as simple as copy pasting the arrows across and then going to the slot like number eight and just putting them in the right place and warping them enough. Kind of just got to pray that once I copy these over to the other side and fix the groups, that it works well enough. You see that arrow effect? We could do the same with a music. Music note, I'm guessing. So 10 is the center. The two sides were seven. So let me just set that up right here. And then the other side, which I need to copy the center for, was number 13, I believe. There we go. Nice detail, dude. Stack these all on top of each other. This can be an arrow right there. And this can be a music note that I'm going to place later. <laughs> That's so cool. Just going to go through and get my green gameplay line that has red dots whenever I click, which is a really nice tool. You can turn that on in the extra settings somewhere. Where is it? Show clicks. It's nice whenever I'm sleep deprived and I can see wherever I need to jump. Uh -huh. Except this one I held and it didn't put the indicator on. That's kind of tricky. <laughs> For this spider orb, it put the click over here. Okay, these might get confusing with the actual spikes in the level. Hmm, this also might get confusing. I might just put arrows straight up this way. Eh, I don't know. Oh, it would make so much sense to put the music note there because you use the music to time the clicks. That's cool. But yeah, let me just nab all these and go into preview mode and just change the hue real quick using this. Jeez, I keep pressing the wrong button. I should just get them all and then go into the HSV and just lower it or increase it. You see how they are pink now? We can probably desaturate these too and make them a little bit brighter. Let me see what I can do here. There we go. That looks much better. This is so weird. Oh my gosh, this is such a cool detail. I actually really like it. The triangles could maybe be a little bit more pointy just to show where they're pointing to. I can fix those for specific arrows. Let me just turn off link controls real quick. Copy the values of these arrows. Find the music note wherever I put it up here and just paste the color so it all goes to pink. But yeah, I should just be able to take these arrows and just warp up like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's so big. Maybe that big is a bit of a joke. I think using arrows with this effect is the most woolsey thing ever in a Dorobe level because they don't point. They're pointing the wrong way. If you looked at this arrow, you would think it's pointing at the orb. This is actually comical, dude. I don't know about this detail anymore. The worst phase of creating is when you start second guessing yourself after you've made something cool. No, I fell off. It looks kind of dumb. Oh man, whatever. It's fine. Real fans know that they're supposed to be jump indicators. People that play the level that haven't watched the video won't know and you guys will be cooler. That's why I did that. Wait, there's a way to fix it. There's a way to fix it. Let me see. Uh, if I go scale X and Y, 
Let me see. If I increase the X, that makes these taller. Interesting. That is insane info, because I can group these now. And you guys are going to hate me, because I'm using yet another area trigger. I'm sorry. It's got to go at the very beginning of the level. I just grouped them as group number 14. So I'm going to slap that straight in the trigger, center it on the player. And as I'm getting there, these objects are going to scale. I think just a little bit taller on the X, but the Y is going to go in like crazy. We're going to put this on like a 15 block radius. Now as we go through these arrows, okay... The last thing we needed is to make the X bigger. I don't know why I did that, but if I make the Y small, these are going to look more like jump indicators, I think. Yes, okay. Sorry for using area scale to fix my mess. I know, I'm a fraud. It kind of matches the pinch effect on the screen, though, no? We have to test it on this music note now. Let's just place a music note with its aspect ratio locked. Warped up, give it group 14. What happens to it? It looks dumb. Okay, we don't use that. Awesome. I just want to point out that the mini soul blade that I'm adding just by warping down on the original is flipped the opposite way. So the effect goes the other way. Hmm. Not sure I like the color on these music notes. It's just an extra bit of hue won't hurt. I just put the music notes as like an extra little bit of encouragement right here. It's like, yes, you're on the right path. Go. I'm going to free move these into place just by selecting them all and then just dragging. Okay, so here's what we have right now. It's a little bit strange. <laughs> Everything is just kind of small and dancing. The soul blades look kind of strange because they barely rotate, but I think this is a pretty cool vibe. We can probably do something with the pulsing and add a little gradient in the background. I think this is really clean. I think this kind of matches the vibe. Because the arrows scale so much, I kind of kept the soul blades well out of the way and off screen. Because they're the same color as the blocks as well. I didn't want to distract. If I place a pulse trigger for color channel 1 with it to 1 and 1, can I change 2? Yes, I can. This is cool. I can make the level go white here. That's kind of cool. Probably also make it go green, which would be something kind of glitchy. I can turn the hitboxes off now, dude. Thank goodness. Why not? I don't know. It's a bit of fun. Then we can make very short, snappy pulses that make it go towards pink. Maybe even further. Oh, that's not further at all. That's going towards purple. I want it to go more red. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, and then this one can have a longer fade timeout. This is going to be super simple. We can just take these three again for the da 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 right here with a short fade time as well. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we can kind of just go around that magenta pink range for a little bit when it goes bum, 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 bum. Yeah. Bing! It's gonna go to white. That's really neat. I like that so far. I'll probably fade color channel one down to a darker purple here. It makes sense. Then we can have bright pulses here. Point one, point five, go into a light pink. Something like this would work pretty well. I like that. And we can just start fading one back to its default state. Like right over here would make sense. Going through into the ship part, you see how all of these squares just spawn. They've kind of been in the game forever. Just to make a bit of atmosphere during the stereo mana ship section. I can't actually find the trigger I'm looking for right now. Here we go. Background effect off. It actually just looks like it says background effect because the background's black. I don't know why that isn't showing, but it makes the background clean as we go through the ship, which is much better, obviously. Okay, let's check the borders here using the preview button right here. So the blue lines are basically where we can see. I'm going to place one object, which is going to be hidden like so. And then I'm going to place a colored object on top of it, which is going to be that purple. And it's going to have a group, which is 15. I'm just going to fly around in the ship. We can even put a reverse portal down like so and just continue. We'll do the same thing where we have a couple of blocks before the music cue to transition right here. That's going to make a nice little ch -ch 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 in the cube, right? It's going to copy this block around maybe just a couple of blocks under the ground and just follow where i went in a pattern like this it doesn't have to be totally accurate i think i just messed up for a second i'm just trying to make a nice simple ship corridor that has no other obstacles than just these blocks i should have made this a lot easier off the rip but i'm basically going to go through and just test flying off the ceiling just to make sure you can go through here because this is the way i intended to make it yeah, look at that. That's so weird. Should be an easy fix, though. We have to turn off our little pinch effect here, by the way. We could just make it go down on, like, a one-second fade time to zero. I think we have to check these buttons as well. That's better. <laughs> the blocks were distorting still with the shader. I was really confused for a second. This should be fine. Once we add our effect here, this is going to be cool. It plays decently. It's good enough, right? Maybe we can have a jump here. Ooh. We should probably go ahead and delete the blocks that didn't make it onto the screen. Wait, we're hiding the ground. Am I going to have to make a fake ground? Wait, this covers the whole screen. No, this part's underneath. There's just a few. We can fix that pretty easily and just leave the ground unhidden. Okay, cool. Now we know we can cut off anything that is more than one block under the ground. Like, right here can be 
cut off as well. I'm just going to extend these down just to meet the ground. So now these come less out of nowhere, I think. Yeah. Now I'm going to use my trusty star object. This is going to be the center on 16. Then we're going to have another point that's like seven blocks away. Maybe six. Up here, basically. Which is going to be number 17. These are going to lock to the x-axis on 18. We can move them with the screen right here. So lock to player. And we're going to save for like... I don't know, 15 seconds? How long is this part? The duration line extends way after this part, which is nice. Remember, the center point is 16, and the other object is 17. So we're going to make a rotation for 17 around 16, which is going to go 5 times in 12 seconds. Let's just layer these above so you can see them. I'll make them white. And now you'll see that there's a circle going around. That's pretty slow and it's pretty far across the screen. What we're going to do is we're just going to move it a lot closer. You can probably move and rotate a little bit earlier in the level and fade on at this point. So the transition kind of makes a little... They're going to be invisible. Dude, I'm tweaking. Of course they're going to be invisible. These are going to be our objects that are going to impact something in these blocks. <sighs> I'm going to place an area scale. I can't help it. I have to do it. I have to do it. I love this trigger so much. Touch trigger. Ease in out. We're going to make these objects go small. Whenever that tiny little star, which is group number 17, that's rotating around, covers the blocks, which I made group 15, I believe, in an area like this. So as that star that's rotating gets close to the blocks, they should scale down. But... That trigger requires a length, which basically means how many blocks away do you want this to happen? Let's just test it with five. Let's go. So, now... Sections of these blocks are just going to be moved around in a spiral like this. It's not fast enough, but let me just show you here. Where is the star at this point? It's up here. You can see these objects are closer to it, so they're going smaller. These objects aren't as affected, nor are the ones at the other side. So when I make this rotation much quicker, like 10 seconds, now sections of these blocks are going to go missing, which is really cool. We've got to add a lot more to this, I think, but it's a nice effect just to have sitting here. We can easily just increase that length to like 150 and have the entire section almost just being shrunken like this. It looks kind of strange though. It doesn't have the same effect at all. It might also help to change the easing as well. We could have a back in out, which would change the way the object scales. So they kind of go a little bit bigger and then smaller, but that's not the most effective thing ever. Do we want it to be stiff with a bounce out? That would make them kind of jump between big, big and small. And that's just so weird. This part of the process is pretty strange because you just have to kind of tweak things inside the area trigger to make them work. And it's hard to explain what I'm doing. So I'm kind of just skipping around here. I think this just looks fine. It's gonna be a bit strange, obviously. I just wanted a nice, fun effect to have. Let's have a look. I'm playing it from the beginning. I like the beginning, and this just gets a bit insane. We could flash the colors on for sure. We could have, like, this grayscale effect, and then it goes away. It's not bad. It actually looks pretty decent, I'd say, for a corridor. It's not very Dorobe, though. I feel like Dorobe is more into, like, the flashy designs and outlines and gimmicks. This doesn't have much of a gimmick going. As we go into the ship, I'm going to make it zoom in to a 1.2 for 4 seconds, and then make it zoom back out to 1 over 8 seconds with an ease in out. Both of them are an ease in out just to make it a lot smoother, and just give the screen a bit of variance during this whole section. Then I'm going to select all of the objects that I've placed so far, all of the colored squares. I should definitely be using custom select with using select filter here so I can just make my entire pass over and not worry about selecting portals. I want to put them on the next free color channel which again just copies number one. We can honestly just put no saturation on the color channel itself and then make a color trigger right in sync with the song. Where are we going to go here? Right here I think because the song goes so we should just be able to copy color number one with four again on like a point two that brings it away from no saturation to being in the color. I had envisioned this being with less color. You know what I mean? It's too white. It's too bright. I want color channel number four to be darker at this point. Yeah, that's decent. It's not great. Hold on a second. So I'm hoping now there's like a fake grayscale effect here where the level kind of flashes into color. We can do something with a gradient over the top that makes it a bit more climactic. Let's place the gradient right here, I think. Now, if I remember correctly, you can put opacities on gradients just by giving them a group and using an alpha trigger, but I might actually be misremembering. Oh, you can. Awesome. So I'll just make this gradient 
a copy of color channel number one. I could just use one. Dude, I, 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 I don't know why I do this. It's like a control freak kind of thing. I'll probably hue the other side of it like 60. Let me just delete this real quick. I mean, uh, it's not great right now. What if I put it over the top? Ew! We have to set this to additive. Yeah, okay. So that kind of changes the blending mode. We can set that up here. Have it set to be invisible at first. And then right before that color switches, we can fade it on for like 0 0.05, something really short. So it goes, and then it's going to fade off half a block later down to zero. So it's like, boom. And then it's in color, right? It goes gray, 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 boom, into color. Is this very Dora Bay of me? No. But I'm gonna do it anyway, because who cares? This is my excuse to make a very simple and fun effect level, because people keep saying that my levels aren't sight readable. I'm sorry. We can even fade it back on to a lower opacity for some of this section. Why not, dude? It's here. Let's just use it. That looks so nice. It's like a nice little portal amplification. We can probably even bulge the level at this point. I don't know. Let's change the shaders to be on every single layer. We'll put it on ease and out, and then we'll just match the move times on the... Oh, sorry, the fade times on the triggers. This is a 2.19. Boom. That's so subtle. That is literally the most subtle thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Okay. Uh, boom. <laughs> That's so lame. Oh my gosh. We'll just have to do the test here. So it's on the yellow portal. There should be a slight bulge that should amplify the level a little bit. Just a nice little detail. That is not smooth. Let's just make it stronger and then fade for longer. I think that makes sense. Let's see. Oh, pfft. I just smacked my head off the ceiling. Oh my gosh, that was terrifying. Okay, so we're going up. And then as we go through the portal, there should just be a slight little screen shift. Yay, nice. And then we can just jump onto some blocks here. Is that none of these blocks are going to have the intended effect in the playtest. I want to... I'm gonna just take a little piece right here and just snake it down into some extra blocks. I just think this kind of structuring would be fun here. I don't know whether these pads should have the scale on them. I think maybe they should just for fun. Why not? They might go a little bit invisible, but this is gonna be an auto part anyway. Then we can go into a wave. We could just put some saw blades under the level here once I pause and unpause and actually look at them properly. Wait, they don't even... I need to make the toggle thing continue if I want to use those. Let's just bring it back specifically for this section. It should be fine, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh god, I'm gonna have to go da 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 da. Sure, we'll just do this. Why not? That's <laughs> not good enough at all. Scale down, yeah. <laughs> that is so goofy. Oh my gosh. I probably shouldn't put the music note into the path of death. I'm not gonna lie. Okay, let's just hope everything is good. This intro is like the most Dora Bay this video is probably gonna get because this is just simple block design with a funky little effect all around the outside that doesn't affect the gameplay at all. The next effect I implemented in the ship affects the gameplay a ton and I'm actually dying in playtesting. But the colors are nice, I think. I like the double effect on the block. I think it's pretty neat and efficient. And then we have a little bridge coming out of this cube section. Why not, dude? I think it's fine. I think it might have broken by the end. I don't know. I have a sneaking suspicion that these two triggers ended. Yeah, look. I knew it. Look, this rotation trigger ends before the part ends. If we have it 10 times in 12 seconds, if I increase this to 18 just to be safe, we should have another half on top. So that's 15. So the effect was still scaling down the blocks. However, it was not rotating around in this pattern that you see on screen right now. So let me see what happens now in this little corridor. This should be a little bit more dynamic. I had a feeling it just stopped. Yeah, that's so much better, dude. I gotta do the screen flash with the gradient and then we're pretty much done. I think that was just fading on 20. I don't remember. Yes, it is. Okay. I'm kind of just go off this. On, off, on, <laughs> off. Ba 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 ba. Yeah. <laughs> then let's just use these saw blades again because they look funny. Da 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 da. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this level's so goofy. Okay, so we're coming out of a corridor-based section, which I don't want to repeat, but I think the UFO portal will suit more than a wave here, with slightly more split-up structures that I can kind of just whack saw blades on top of, like this. Also using a gradient trigger with a few corners of these blocks, like so. Let's mark the first one 21, let's mark the second one 22. And if I place another gradient trigger and edit the specials so that the top left is 21 and the bottom right is 22, we should get a little section like this. 
We can make cool looking structures like this that we can flip around, hiding the blocks on top just for a hitbox and we should have like a smooth block. We can even hide the stars for the corners. And that creates a cool looking structure that when I select and copy paste using build helper, I can repeat moving the corner down. So yeah, this should be pretty fun. Let's put our saw blades in as well. We're gonna make these a lot slower and then create another layer on top, which is gonna be scaled down with an increased Z order, so it's layered above. Except we need a different color for this. We can probably just go with one with more brightness. Hmm, just realizing that this looks like this saw blade is invisible. Or I could flip the colors, which makes more sense. I think I'm gonna make the main structure a three by three pillar. Then I'm just first gonna copy paste around, just adjusting the corners of these pillars to meet the ground and bringing them up from underground too. Just so this gradient starts at the same point, which is the floor. You see how it changes? Then I'm gonna custom select all of these gradient triggers using select filter and the custom delete option right here. Give them a group 73, and we're just gonna start a zero second, or maybe a 0.1 second ease in out rotation of 90 degrees, which is gonna make them basically go like up. I think I'm gonna make them rotate every couple of blocks here, just on a loop, so the direction of these gradients is slightly changing here. It's interesting. Let's see if I can change the colors here and make it a bit more climactic. I'm also gonna select all of the outer layers of these saw blades and add them to a group, which is gonna be put onto an area tint. So let's change the layer to edit layer number two. And with 76, we place down this area tint pretty early. We need a new black color channel. Or we can just use color channel 5, which keeps it at least on color. Let's full tint it there. And as we get close to it, I guess we can tint it. So we just keep it on the default setting. Target 76 on the player. So now these are getting darker as I approach them, which is interesting. I can take the regular ones the same way, give them a group, and apply the same thing, but make them go to purple for group 77. So these should invert as I'm passing them, which is slightly ugly, unfortunately. I wasn't expecting that. Another thing I was thinking thinking is that we could take all of the stars, give them a group 78, and move them random amount as we pass. Let's do like a 150 easing out, and we just drag the sliders up on the distance and angle. Now, as I follow through, these should go random directions, and that's too much, obviously. First off, we should move them into place as we're getting there. That makes more sense here. They're definitely not doing well, though. So let's move it a lot less, and then check the relative box so that it looks a bit more smooth. Yeah, so these now moving onto the screen, interestingly. And there's no kickback on the left of the screen. I don't actually know what the relative button does, but I just know that it helps with that. I think since the maximum move distance here is only 20, we should move the tops and the bottoms of the gradients off the screen by that much, like this. Just to confirm that they never go off and they're always gonna stay there, you know what I mean? I think we're gonna add to these two rotation triggers with some pulses. So let's start off with a pulse trigger that's on group 74. This is the most inconvenient way that I could possibly choose to add to a loop, but hey, let's start off with a change for color channel number one, which is gonna make it go to pink and then we can make color channel number five which is our opposite color here go to black instead what group is this this is 75 okay so we put this trigger on that and then we also make one for group number 77 which is our inner saw blade here which is going to make it go to maybe a slightly more magenta -y pink so the loop's going to go like this and it's a very subtle way to do the colors but i kind of like it and then for everything in the level so far i'm going to make another scale just because they're so easy to do and it kind of fits in with the whole vibe of the level in my opinion. We just make it an X and Y based scale that makes it go from 0.5 with a slight bit of variance. We can say like plus or minus 0.2 on each of them with a long length as well. Ease in out, making sure this trigger is touch triggered. It's got potential. The length is just way too long and makes it less noticeable. So we can drop that to like 120. And now the part feels a lot more dynamic. Here we go. Okay, let's take another gradient that we can build helper. That's the keys button, wrong one. Move it down to a block and then place a spike using the same colors and groups. So this is number one, the base, and the detail has to be number five with group 77. Does this work? Yes, it does. Okay. We need group 79 on this thing as well. So it scales like the rest. Let's just make sure that plays properly. It's fine. Let's just keep this block well out of the way, but make sure that it fills up some space. And we could just vary the outlines here just to make some of them not, you know, squares. Then let's place some glow here with a new color channel that copies number one with blending. We can stack some objects here that have group number 79 and maybe 77 as well, just so it changes color nicely there. And we can place just a couple of indicators like so. Then we can just add to this a little bit with maybe an extra little beam. And this can be our jump indicator for the part, just for people that hate UFO sections. I may or may not be one of them. This level isn't really that 
Dora Bay, but at least it's basic. <laughs> Maybe when I don't stick to the theme here. You know, themed levels are pretty difficult to pull off. I'm trying my best here. I really respect people that make themed levels because this is really difficult. It's a difficult blend that I'm trying to achieve, making a Dora Bay level in 2.2 when a lot of 2.2 effects involve area triggers and more flashy things, but I think I'm doing okay. Okay, now what I'm doing is just copy pasting some ground spikes over the top of the level here that make the gradients look pretty cool on the underside. With the area scale, I'm attempting to create a little bit of a ground. It just feels less and less Dora Bay with whatever I add, bro. This is crazy. Yeah, it blocks up some of the gameplay as well. We can easily just slap this on B5. Maybe call the day for that? I don't know. It kind of works. We started off with this really simple beginning that probably captures the Dora Bay vibe the most just by using very simple blocks and then an extra effect that doesn't affect the gameplay at all. Then we spammed some area scales and stuff in the ship corridor, which works decently well, I think. Kind of reminds me of some stuff from Dora Bay Basic 3. And then this next part, was just meant to be a simple gradient trick, but it ended up being a lot more with different movements and stuff. It kind of works. It feels the same as the rest of the level, but doesn't really feel that Dora Bay. It has the gloomy stuff nailed, I think. But I feel like Dora Bay levels are supposed to be bright and colorful. I don't know what went wrong. With each part on the level, we stray further and further away from a true Dora Bay level. But I promise my next idea is a banger. I'm just going to take one of these blocks and just warp it down ever so slightly so that when I copy paste and move to the side, these blocks are kind of just boxed up and they have a bit of an outline to them. I'm just hoping that I can copy paste and make a little bridge using a lot of these little blocks using the area move to its advantage like that. I really just need to make this as simple as possible moving forward because this is not Dora Bay at all. It's difficult to get this right because I haven't really seen a Dora Bay level with any new features since like 1.9. It's kind of assuming how things would go here, how much Dora Bay would use movements, how much they would use scales. I want to put this as a duel that's going to be a bit quicker. Kind of put a faster duel section right here. It's just coming to me that I should be using this spawn loop once again. Let's start off with a zoom using that same group 74, making it spawn triggered and multi-triggered like so. Going in to 1.1 and then going out on group 75 to 0 0.9. So the camera kind of goes duh, duh, duh. Kind of forgetting that the camera can be extremely dynamic. That looks awful. It could definitely help me get across some of the simplistic vibes that I'm trying to create. It's just slightly too sharp. I'm sure I can make it work. I just think I need to make simple but catchy gimmicks for each section. This would definitely help this part stand out there. It's, it's it's almost there. It seems to help placing one of these on a bounce out easing. So it smoothly goes in and then snaps out like this. I think this works better. Let's also place a very long camera rotation of two degrees, which is going to have a bounce out as well. Going back to normal too on an easing out. That kind of tilts the level forward a little bit. I wonder if we can smoothly rotate the camera around here. It's a lot. I don't like it. I feel like this will never, ever work, but I always try it just in case I get it right. You know what I mean? It's good to try. I'm going to try a slow rotation to 30, which goes back to zero relatively quickly. And that works a lot better, in my opinion, except I'm going to put this on a minus 30 instead of a positive 30, because in this UFO, we already tilted the camera two degrees forward. I'm not going to make that three. Just trying to make this UFO part a little bit more sticky, because it is a little bit messy as it is, and I feel like it needs a little bit more just to make it stand out from the rest of the level here and keep the energy. Energy. Let's just test out this bridge. See, that works a lot better. We can even zoom at that, but I'll figure it out later. What if I put the saws beneath the gradient layers? The saws are what? T1? If we just select them all, go to edit special, and change the layer to T2, then the saws will go behind. This actually looks a lot better. I don't know why I didn't do this from the start. <laughs> Can't believe it, dude. All right, folks, it is time to make this Dora Bay basic level actually basic. That's right, I remembered what the concept of the video was. We're gonna make our gameplay symmetrical, AKA just focusing on the bottom gameplay and then copy pasting it by the end. Except for objects in the middle of the screen like this one, I'm going to bump it up and create two separate layers because the top half are gonna have certain values and the bottom half are gonna have different ones. So this block with double outlines may look weird, but it's for a reason. Does this ball set work? I think it does. Being careful not to use any orbs because I think it might ruin the effect. So then we're going to match a radial blur here with a negative size with a chromatic glitch with a lot of strength to distort one side. Then when the song switches, I can change this to B2 and the side that is blurring will switch with the song, which is pretty cool. I just need to figure out how to make it a bit more smooth. Maybe just before it, I can put both layers on. So it kind of transitions from side to side. I just don't know how I'm going to make that work. I'm a little bit scared of the site readability. I might tone down this blur Blurring is a slight bit because it is kind of crazy. I'm trying to make it a bulge instead. Not all the way, but just something that's a little bit less readable. And it's not great. I think the pixelate works 
fine. It makes it look a bit blurry, which is what I wanted. I just need to make it more smooth for the transition. And then I'm quite literally just going to set down a grayscale. And I'm going to make sure all of these fade times are just on really short. I'm a little bit worried about the transition in here being a bit of an issue decoratively. Hopefully this looks good. I don't know. I kind of like it. I have to turn off particles and stuff. There's a little bit of stuttering too. But I think if I add more detail and stuff, it should be fine overall. I don't know about that transition out either, but we can fix it. I'm just going to delete this last little section. Change all the colors to one and one. And then hopefully warp up some details. Oh, those objects don't pulse anymore? What? What is with that? That sucks. Dude, I used the wrong version of it. Why did, Why is the two versions of these blocks, man? Now I'm mad and it's made me not want to use them. I'm using color channel six now because it has blending on it just to add a couple of extra details. Just making the same pulsing squares, but on the longer platforms, I'm making them horizontal and just scaling them. Or I should say warping them because I'm only changing the width of these. I might even get silly and do some particles that are varied on the X using star objects and using the object color, which is going to be six, which is number one with blending. Then we can scale these up and create a cool looking ground here. I don't think that's too crazy to suggest, except they should be a lot slower. So let's just slow them down a lot. We can spin them and we can start them off being bigger and going to zero size. Okay, we should probably fade them on too, just by going into the extra settings. Someone told me this in the comments. I'm really just going to copy these twice and then lock them to the x-axis. It's like a 0.5 mod, so we go past them over time. There we go, just like that. That's much cleaner in my opinion. And I think we can just add some very small chains that don't cut into the other side of the screen. Now I have to flip these and put them on to be three. And we can surely just free move these like so. And we're going through and only the bottom section is lit up. And then the top section is lit up with the same detail. This is hype. Okay, I nailed it. This is awesome. If we make the fade times so much longer, we might get away with this. It's really lazy. I know. I think that's cool. The grayscale is just way too much. So let's just delete that. This could be neat if we faded at the right time. When everything disappears, we can probably just make it a single ball from here. And then we can literally just place down an options trigger wherever that is and just hide player number two on. Yeah, I think this thing's neat. I don't know. It's the messiest thing ever. It's not the best executed idea, but I think it works for a Dora Bay basic level. No, because these levels do some crazy stuff with the dual game mode and I'm trying. I don't normally make duels. Ah, the classic night before Woolsey Wednesday. Thank you to Schween for editing a good portion of the beginning of this video. Otherwise, this may not have even gotten done in time. We are touch triggering this gravity trigger similarly to as I did in the circle only challenge just to transition out of this ball that I can't make the editor understand is free modes. So the star pause will never work. Thank you, game. Maybe I'll just put a cube portal here as well on hidden. Why not? We'll just do that. <laughs> I normally sleep at 10 p.m. and it's 9, so I'm going to try and make this next part in literally just one hour. We're going to zoom in on the player here with like a 0.4 time and then make it rotate back to zero degrees in one second. I've kind of spaced these out a little bit. Boom. Yeah, that looks good. And we can just zoom back to normal. I think for this last part, I'm literally just going to mess with the swapping back and forth idea I had, except not with shaders, but with blocks on different effects with toggle triggers and stuff. This may be a slightly underbaked Woolsey Wednesday and you may notice that I've been a little bit out of time for the last couple of ones. I do feel a little bit bad about that. I've got a few editors now that are going to be helping me make videos for these. But honestly, what's making me happy is the fact that I'm still getting to publish a level every week. Kind of prioritizing that over some of the last few videos. I do like this Dora Bay level, don't get me wrong. But when I look at this, I think, hmm, could I have done better? And the answer is definitely a yes. I'm going to slowly pan the camera over to this spike using a static camera trigger right here over one second with ease in out. We're just going to build up some of the edges here. Ah, nice little fake I just made by accident. Man, this video really is a flop. Where's the funk? Where's the cool object choices? Like, where's the anything? I got to try this again sometime with like a bit more interest in the design rather than the ideas. That's kind of where I went wrong. We just have funky looking structures here. I'm going to try and change the colors up a lot, although I am going to make them fade out at the end of the part just to black, including the object line. This just kind of goes away. Wow, Woolsey, amazing! Yeah, I know. Really cool stuff here. Let's pulse the object line to like yellow. Wowie! This is so incredible, guys. What an amazing Woolsey Wednesday this has been. Wow! We can just delay the actual color channel doing this, I guess. So the object lines go first and then the insides go after. And we loop. Yeah! I think some pixel blocks would do the job here if I can get them right. Aha! 
managed to figure out something here. And the best thing is this is just a single block long. So whenever I move these objects with an area, it's going to stick up with them. Meaning there shouldn't be any cracks in the design. Ooh. Oh, this is cool. Why have I not been doing funkier stuff this video? Oh my gosh. Literally the prime opportunity. I'm really sorry for the negativity towards the end of this video. I just can't stand the fact that I've left so many avenues that just weren't explored because I wasn't tapped in enough to the theme and I'm figuring it out after I'm making it. Like, this literally looks so much cooler than any other part on the level because I actually tried to make it a bit more Dorabe. You know what I mean? Okay, so now we're going to do my idea, which is to select all of these, give them a group, then copy paste, go to another layer, give them another group, copy paste, give them another group, go to another layer, copy paste, give them another group, go to another layer. That was group 185, 186, 187, and 188. We're going to make them fade on and off. We're going to loop them, and it looks normal for now, but we're going to set up area moves ahead of time, which is first going to be set to 10 and 10. And this is going to be for group 185, centered on the player, moving them into place with the x-axis only before we get there. Simple as this. Then there's going to be another one for 186, which is going to have minus 10 and plus 10 on the angle. Then 187 is going to have minus 10 and minus 10. And 188 will have... 10 and minus 10. So as we go in, these layers are going to kind of glitch out like this and it's going to look very epic and trippy. Yippee! I think this is probably the most fun part of the level so far. <laughs> I don't know, it, it came together so effortlessly. I barely even had to try here, but I got it to work. I guess to make the beginning parts more interesting, I can loop this around the color wheel a little bit more because we found out that experimenting with the colors actually makes a big difference into how the level is feeling. Maybe just briefly yellow because no really likes this color very much sad face just loop that and now this part is a lot more interesting but we can make it constantly pulse to pink like this like a 0 0.05 0 0.5 type thing after a lot of work not a lot of thoughts and a lot of brain cells lost and a lot of rage not really fulfilling the concept of the level the way that i wanted to this is Woolsey Wednesday Basic. It's kind of my own spin on it. I guess it does have its own charm. It has some pretty cool ideas. A lot of it is slightly area move and area scale and area tint carried. However, I think it's a nice fun little level. I just wanted to put it out. I think it's nice just to make a nice simple building video that most people can follow. Hopefully, I don't know if the triggers are too advanced. Maybe I try my best. I think this is fun. I had fun building it. That's what matters. I think there are some pretty cool ideas. My favorite part is probably the duel in the middle, how it plays, and the ideas that I got across with the switching screen. I do like the ending too. The gameplay is broken. It's just a goofy level. That's all I really have to say. There's not a lot of detail here and there. It's basically just focused on the main factors, which are the blocks and the colors and the effect. This duel section really had to grow on me because of how long it took to get that effect right. But this ending section really came together in an instant. I don't know how I managed to pull it off in just 20 minutes, but yeah, I think it's a cool ending to the level. I didn't even make an end screen. It's just going to sit there because this level just that's what it deserves. That's all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching this Wolsey Wednesday basic. I can barely even call it the Dora Bay basic. I'm sorry for disgracing the Dora Bay name. Thank you so much for watching this Jump to Dash video. Check the links in the description. Leave a like and subscribe and have a good day.